Welcome to our tutorial about automation. Automation lets us save our changes on each track's volume, pan, effects, and more throughout your song so that everything plays back just how you've mixed it. In the olden days, you had to have a lot of people preparing a mix all at once, and they all had to rehearse it carefully because the sliders on the analog console had to be moved in real time. Any mistakes couldn't be fixed easily. Automation makes this process a lot easier. You're able to adjust the tracks one at a time, parameter by parameter, and then go back and make changes wherever you want, whenever you want. Automation is most commonly used to change volume, pan, sends, and insert effects, muting a track, and bypassing any sent or inserted effects. In this tutorial, we'll be learning how to create automation for the volume faders on audio tracks. We'll be using the mixer and dragging the sliders up and down. We'll be writing automation manually in the event display window in our next tutorial on automation. Let's look at our tracks in the project window. Each one has an R and a W button. R is green, it stands for read. W stands for write. The write button is red when it's active. Each of these read and write enable a track for automation. When the read button's active, you're telling Cubase to read any automation you've created during your song's playback. Let me play this part. We'll open up the mix window and check it out. My strings track is read enabled. That means when I start playback, Cubase is going to read any automation that I've written for this track. See how the slider moves on its own? That's not me. That's happening on its own. That's because Cubase is reading automation I've already recorded. Let's stop the playback. When the read button is disabled, or white, Cubase won't read the automation that you've written, even though it's still stored. It's not deleted, but it just won't play. See how the slider doesn't move this time? Cubase is not playing the automation I've recorded here. When the write button is active, that's your signal to Cubase to save whatever movements to controls that you make, either with your mouse or on an external controller. Let's check it out here. Let me adjust the fader a little bit. And let's press stop. Now let's go back and have a listen. Let's enable the read button. Position the cursor. Let's disable the right button and press play. And Cubase plays back the automation that I just recorded. If the read and write buttons are enabled, Cubase will read your automation and allow you to make changes to it during the playback. Be focused while writing automation. For example, if I mute another track during write-enabled playback so that I can better hear the track that I'm writing automation for, Cubate will save that mute control and this track will mute during a subsequent playback. It'll be hard for me to track down the problem and it's actually pretty easy to overwrite existing automation, so do stay focused. I recommend that once you're happy with the track's automation, lock it so you don't accidentally write over it. Use this lock button in the track list area. It's yellow when it's locked and it shows the lock being closed. Just click it again to unlock the track. When a track is locked, you can't write automation to it. Activating the read and write buttons on a track in any control window will activate them in all the other control windows for that track. The inspector, the mixer, etc. Writing automation with an external analog mixer that's connected to your computer can feel more intuitive and sensitive to many than dragging the faders up and down with your mouse, like I just did. This is something you might wish to consider. If you're using the mixer faders or an external console for your automation, you can choose from different automation modes that tell Cubase how to behave while you're writing. The automation mode selection is available in the toolbar up top. If you don't see it, just right click on any tool and ensure that automation mode is checked. There's five automation modes available. Touch Fader, Auto Latch, Crossover, Overwrite, and Trim. Touch Fader is our default. This starts writing as soon as you move any control and it stops when you release the control. In the Automation Return Time field, you select how long the transition back to your pre-write level should take to ensure that the transition is smooth. You can enter a custom value or use the arrows to click up and down. 
The auto latch mode starts writing as soon as you move a control, and it keeps writing until you stop playback or deactivate write status. This is good when you want to change a longer section of a song. It's different than touch, which stops recording as soon as you let go of the control or mouse. And Cubase will continue holding that value until you press stop. Whereas in touch fader, it would have popped back to its original position. Crossover starts writing as soon as you move a control. It stops writing as soon as it crosses any previously written automation. This is useful if you don't want to overwrite a certain part of your mix. The next mode is overwrite. It starts writing as soon as playback starts, even if you don't move any controls. It only works for volume automation. Use this mode when you want to replace volume automation, especially in big chunks. The last mode is the trim mode, and like overwrite, it only works for volume automation. It doesn't erase the previous automation, however, it just offsets it. Let's say that when you listen to your mix, you like the curves you wrote, but the whole thing is maybe a little too loud. Let's check out my vocal. I've got it boosted at 3.72. Let's disable read and write on the other tracks, write enable this one, position my cursor a little before the start. And let's adjust the fader. I'm going to lower it a little bit. It's now at plus two. All of my existing automation curves will now be lowered proportionately by this amount that I've lowered the fader here. This concludes our tutorial on writing automation to audio tracks using the mixer. In our next tutorial, we'll learn how to draw automation manually in the project window.